Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to all of the people that are, uh, are witnesses today. I appreciate the time. Uh, my first question is for Mr. Jankowski with Francis Energy. I believe you said that you built 355 electric vehicle charging stations in Oklahoma and that the rural charging stations take 50 to 70 minutes uh, to charge the vehicles. Is that accurate? So, uh, Congresswoman Lesko, um, thank you for the opportunity to kind of clarify. Um, so there's basically three gradations of superchargers. There's the 60, 90 to 90 minute charger, and those have applications that we discussed. There's also the 20 to 40 minute charger. And that to us is, is kind of the bread and butter for retail um, settings because it typically matches kind of the behavioral patterns of people going into grocery stores or going to shop or eating in, in cafes. And then you have the seven to 12 minute chargers. So in the state of Oklahoma, uh, we have uh, four of these systems that are currently at convenience uh, facilities, convenience stores on highways through Oklahoma. Those are all in rural areas. Um, so the build out in the rural communities is going to be a mix of those grades of chargers, just depending on the application and depending on the site. And thank you, Mr. Jankowski. So uh, just to confirm you, right now you have four of the 355 charging stations are the fast ones, seven to nine minutes. Um, and how, how many are these uh, 20 to 40 minute ones? So of our portfolio, um, I'd say, you know, 49% are the 50 kWs. So those are the slower charging uh, systems, the 60 to 90 minutes that have great applications in certain settings. Of course, the, another 49% is the 20 to 40 minute charger. The, those to us are kind of the bread and butter for public usage, not for cross country commuting traffic, but for local communities, a 20 to 40 minute charge. Um, and then, of course, uh, 2%, roughly, um, are those superchargers, the, the 400 kW chargers. And the reason for that is they're very expensive. Um, and a consumer on the highway at a Francis Energy station getting a 7 to 12 or 9-minute charge is going to pay anywhere between $18 to $22 for uh the full range, 300 plus mile range to fill up their battery. That, that's kind of the market uh, in our part of the world. Obviously, it's going to be very different because it's very dependent on electricity rates, which is very low. And, and how much would a full charge that costs 18 to $22 to fill up, how far would that car go? So, Congresswoman, that, that is very much dependent not on the charging stations, which can deliver all the power that any car is going to need in America. It's dependent on the battery in the car and the onboard software that controls it. So, as an example, you know, a Nissan LEAF today is going to take longer to charge simply because of the battery chemistry, smaller battery in that Nissan LEAF, whereas a larger vehicle with a larger battery will be able to take that well, charge in seven to nine so, and, and go 300 plus mile ranges. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to go to Dr. Foss. Um, Dr. Foss, do you think it makes sense for us to shift uh, so fast to electrification of the transportation sector in the goal of reducing emissions when existing electric vehicle battery production in China is powered significantly by coal-fired electric power generation? Uh, Congresswoman Lesko, I think that for many, many years, the bulk of battery making in many places is going to be uh, powered by coal use. Uh, that, that's the structure in most of the, of the countries outside of ours, um, even in ours in some places where battery manufacturing is either located now or contemplating it, it being located, it will, it will use whatever is available on the grid and good baseload power, I mentioned nuclear earlier, coal, other sources, natural gas, 
um, will be what feeds battery manufacturing. Um, what we're doing is shifting emissions around. I appreciate fully the desire to do things that um, reduce pollution in urban air sheds and, and other places. Um, I think what you have to do is weigh that against all of the consequences that are being created elsewhere in the supply chain and value chains. Thank you, and Mr. Chair, I yield back.